What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. So today we're going to go ahead and take a look at a card that I feel is a little rare in the scene. Uh, we don't see it very often being mined with. I think one just because of the fact of it's the 2000 series as well as a lot of people are gaming with these and you don't see them as commonly in mining rigs. So if I am entirely wrong and you have one of these cards please go ahead and post in the comments down below. I'd love to know that you're running one. So today we're gonna to go ahead and take a look at the EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Super XC Ultra. Talk about a bazillion submodels right there. So this is the card, it's right in the back. Uh, it's actually part of our hanging GPU build. This is the one that we just did about a week ago. Um, we have four cards currently mining in this rig. We have a fifth one on the way. And right now we have this sucker, of course, you know, if we have the opportunity to mine with it, we're gonna go ahead and mine with it. We don't wanna waste time. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look right now, some of the stock hash rates that we're currently looking at, uh, if this will focus, uh, is it's only doing stock about 36 mega hash on Ethereum. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and take a closer look. Then we'll also discuss getting into some overclocking and undervolting and uh, see what we can do with Ethereum, uh, see what it does with something like Ravencoin, uh, just to give us a better idea as to how this card performs overall. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. Okay, so we are over to the computer. Um, so to give you guys an idea, we were previously um, gaming with this card. Uh, I had a video not too long ago talking about the 2080 uh, Super as well as the 3060 XC. And I haven't been gaming as much as what I used to. So I decided, hey, let's put the 2080 Super to work out of my gaming rig and into my mining rig one because the uh, it's just significantly easier to manage within hive os you don't have to worry about dummy plugs and limiters and um the 470 nvidia driver on windows and instead you know i can just mine with the 20 uh the 2080 and then throw the 3060 into my like, gaming rig and you know it's not entirely comparable but at the same time it'll get us by without very little notice so that's kind of where we stand today so um, moving on from there, uh, this card is, is definitely a little bit different. Uh, it's a beefier card. It, it, it came out quite some time ago before the whole uh, GPU gold rush, we'll call it. Uh, so it's got a little bit of age on it. Uh, now we're not talking years and years old, but it's, it's, it's a little bit a few years old here. And uh, that being said, you know, taking a look at this card to give us a better idea, uh, the EVGA one especially is, is definitely a unicorn, uh, hard to come by. Um, it looks like it released here in July 23rd, 2019. So two years ago, give or take, uh, so some big key items off of this uh, is if we go ahead and scroll down, you know, there are a multitude of different cards out there for everybody under the sun. Um, lots of Rock Strix is out there. Uh, EVGA has their versions. But if you take a look, the one that we're looking at today is um, the EVGA RTX 2080 Super XC Ultra. Uh, and you can go ahead and see, or right up here, uh, you can go ahead and see that, you know, it's 1845 on the megahertz uh, as well as 1937. Uh, when we look at boost clock and also memory clock so quite a bit of room to wiggle um, with these and then as you kind of work your way down through that's actually for the hybrid um, and as you work your way down through you can see the variations of this card alone uh, even the it's funny it makes me laugh like there's like an xc xc2 xc2 ultra like they're all over the place uh, so interesting enough what i wanted to show you guys is what I bought this card for. Uh, so if we jump over to, I had to dig deep in my email in July 10th. Um, let me see if I can find. So July 10th, uh, two years ago, we bought this card. So 2019, July 10th, we bought this card for a total with tax for $829. 
And I picked it up. I remember picking it up directly from Walmart. We got it from Walmart, guys, of all places. Well, jump ahead, a quick search on Walmart, on, uh, Walmart, on Amazon. And, and this is not, you know, I don't know who's paying these prices, but uh, you can see here the XC Gaming goes for $14.89 and the Ultra goes for $1,700. Who in their right mind is paying $1,700 for a 2080? Like, what are you thinking? You're insane. Um, because I think what you need to do is really think about it from a, if we're, if we're talking about mining, from a mining perspective, uh, today what we'll do is look at hash rate versus cost. So hash rate versus cost when we first got our card at $800 versus hash rate versus cost now at $1,700 to give you guys a better idea as to, you know, is it worth $1,700 for X amount of hash rate? Uh, and the answer is going to be no, but let's go ahead and get into that to understand how much it's costing per hash rate. Um, so jumping over to our farm, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump onto our rig Havoc. That's what we've named it. We're naming all of our rigs alpha, uh, based off of X-Men. This one is Havoc uh, because of all the trouble that it gave us with this rig. And uh, taking a look here, let's go ahead and do a quick refresh. Uh, the bottom card there, GPU2, uh, is our card. We have no overclock or underclock configurations in there. It's at 170 watts, and it's doing 36.66 mega hash is what it's doing currently right now. Um, and uh, so nothing to write home about. I mean, you could take a look up here. Here's an RX 580. It's doing 31.88. So when you think about it, you know, these are the things you have to think about when you're starting to research what cards to get. Uh, you know, which ones are the most efficient, you're getting the most amount of uh, mega hash out of, you know, those are things to keep in mind. So right now, uh, if we go ahead and bring up our calculator here handy dandy windows calculator and we take seventeen hundred dollars uh divided by 36.66 okay so that gives you an idea as to how much it is going to cost per mega hash so let's round this to 46 so if we were to take this here to reverse it times 36.66 Okay, so that's what our math is correct. So what this is telling us is it was going, it is caught for, it is costing us $46 US per mega hash at $1,700, which is crazy, crazy. So here, here's a good comparison the RX 580. Um, I bought this for $250. Now, granted, a few months ago, but. If you go ahead and take a look at that, uh, that gives us a better idea. Um, so if we go ahead and look at that, uh, and we take well, what that is there, so 250 divided by 31.88, that's seven, $7 per mega hash. So they're off, they're off by what, four, five, about five mega hash there. The difference is, is 7.8, so we'll round it to eight. So eight versus 46. What would you rather pay? Eight dollars for mega hash or forty-six dollars for mega hash? So, uh, huge difference. Like this is this is the type of stuff you look at, guys, and go, okay, uh, I'm going to go with the RX 580, not the 2080 Super, because of this reasoning. Uh, you have to remember, graphics cards aren't entirely made just for mining. Uh, they do have the uh, gaming um, concept to it as well. So next, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, overclocking. So let's go ahead and into this card, and I'm going to put in some settings here. Um, we're going to start out with these settings, and then we're going to move to some other settings. So if we jump in here and do negative 100, uh, we then go ahead and look at 3200 for our memory. Um, and then our fan speed, we're going to do 65. And our power limit, we're going to do 125. Um, and uh, other than that, we don't need to make any other adjustments. We're going to go ahead and apply. So let's see with simple overclock settings where we go. So we were at 36.66. Uh, and uh, we'll do some math here too. 
uh, to see you know, kind of where that goes. But uh, we've gone ahead and apply it. Uh, let's give it a few seconds here before we refresh the page. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and see what we're getting. And then we'll take this to the next level and, and get a little bit more fine tuning to see how far we can take this. Uh, being careful, you know, we don't want to overdo things too much. So let me go ahead and refresh. Okay, so we're up to 40.8 right now uh, is where we're at right now. So we've jumped, you know, five, four, five mega hash. Not too crazy, not too, too bad. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh it again here. We're at 45. Okay, so looking pretty good. Um, so if we were to look at that math again that we were just talking about, okay, uh, we did our math here and uh, our math was the let's see we did 1700 divided by 45.23 okay so now we've taken our hash rate down so we were at 46 47 dollars now we're down to 37 so with a simple overclock configuration we have dropped 10 dollars in cost per mega hash um still don't know that this would be worth purchasing at that 1700 mark but if we go back and look at what I bought this card for, so $800 divided by 45.23, now we're down to $17 per mega hash. And even then, that's a little steep. That's definitely a little steep um, in that regard. Not the worst. Could be, could be worse. But definitely some food for thought uh, if you guys are looking at the 2080 Super. So uh, we're at 124 watts. Something we want to look at is uh, absolute core clock. So there's a newer feature that came out within Hive OS, uh, actually within NVIDIA, um, Turing and Aperture cards. Uh, this is something they released, and Hive OS supports it now, which is awesome, called absolute core clock. And uh, you may have seen uh, Red Panda Mining, as well as uh, Son of a Tech, do a video on these uh and uh, great videos out there they've actually they most of these guys are running nvidia farms most of my stuff is amd i have a few nvidia cards scattered here and there but as we're still we're still we're still beginners here as you guys know all still beginners so uh that being said uh they have some great videos out there i'll put links down below if you're looking for more extensive videos on absolute core clock but let's go ahead and test it out so we're at 124 right now. I want to go ahead and refresh this one more time to make sure we have them. Okay, 125, and we're at 45.22. So if we go in here, instead of doing negative 100 uh, for our settings, let's go ahead and put in 1100. Everything else will stay the same. So now you can see absolute core clock. So look at that, the title right there. Core clock over, uh, offset. Now, absolute core clock. Let's go ahead and apply it. And uh, our goal is to go ahead and see here, and I'm just going to bring up Notepad and write that down, 45.23 and 125 watts, okay? So now let's refresh this and see what has occurred with now these absolute core clock configurations that we've put in place. And we're refreshing and okay. So we dropped down to 106 and we're at 43.96. So we've lost hash rate, but we've also gone down a significant amount of watts. So I'm going to give it another second. Uh, I want to see if this uh, has updated even more. Okay, we've actually dropped a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to update our numbers to 42.20. So if we do that, with this setting change, we have gone from 125 down to 106. So we've dropped 19 watts. So let's say 20 watts. So with this, you can drop 20 watts at the sacrifice of three mega hash. So definitely worth it uh, when you're talking about your, you know, what is that mega hash going to profit you versus, um, you know, what is your electricity cost, you know, and, and going from there, um, subtracting, you know, your profits, uh, your costs from your profits or expenses from your profits. Uh, this is a good, good thing to do. Uh, you could do this across the board. 
Uh, you can apply this across the board to all of your NVIDIA cards. Uh, as the article had said, this applies to your 16 series cards, your 20 series cards, and your 30 series cards. So in reality, I can actually look at applying this to my 16 series card here, which is crazy because of the fact of, I'm at 99 watts right now. So the fact that we can drop that core clock even lower is insanity. Uh, or sorry, change our core clock and get our wattage even lower, which is pretty, pretty crazy. So right now we're going to stick at this, these configurations here. I'll put these settings down below within the video description if you guys want to go ahead and copy them. Um, as I said, we're running our core at 1100, our memory at 3200, and our power limit at 125. Um, so other than that, guys, that's going to go ahead and wrap things up for today. I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a quick 10, 15 minute video on the GeForce RTX 2080 Super XC Ultra. Uh, if you guys did enjoy this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.